Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it. With the new Galaxy S24 Ultra and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Live from New York, it's the show that is in a non-serious Family crisis. <laughs> oh, this is great. In this would be spot. great if you had a podcast. I, I, I'm, I'm lost. Wilds is it a UConn fan. YouTube. His family's an Illinois fan. Oh. They and play like, each other. They're like, let's have a party. They want the Wilds to host the watch party. UConn's going to win, so do it. You can Disaster. gloat. You can That's have a not ball. going to go <laughs> well. Gloating is not good against your wife's family. <laughs> not good. Go first things first. Send me your recommendations today. <laughs> Fallout from Draymond's ejection. Is this More? Steph Curry's... Last oh, dance. Oh. Meanwhile, some people on this show are ready for the eventual Brock Purdy regression. Not are the me. 49ers helping if they don't extend Ayuk? And finally, the most delicious segment in all of sports, it's title pie. This time, Brew, with pie. Mississippi mud? That was I don't my, know. That was my uh, recommendation. I think I think there is some pie in store for both of us. Yeah. Alongside we'll Chris Broussard, who is excited about pie. Yeah. I'm Kevin Wilds. Yeah. Nick, any surprises in Titan? Okay. Yeah, yes, a new one new team on, two teams off. Oh. How about that? We start with another Celtics loss to the Hawks. What's going on here? This time in overtime. Tatum misses that. Joe Mazzula called that a good shot. <laughs> I respectfully disagree. DeJounte goes for 44 on only 44 shots. <laughs> Celtics are a healthy 11 games up on the Bucks. But, Brew, did this loss raise any concerns in your mind? Well, first let me say this. Wiles has told us he thinks the Lakers are better without LeBron. I, I you and I have that. wondered aloud if is Houston better without Shin Goon. Uh-huh. Well, the Hawks are now 12-10 and 10 without Trey Young. 12 and 22 10. and 29 with him. So, I mean, 12 and 10 right. isn't awesome. But, but, but they were terrible right. with him this year. Yes. I mean, Trey is wonderful uh, skills. He's got yeah. the bag. Yes, but exactly. Can right. he win? Mm-hmm. But anyway, look, the Celtics a few uh, – a month or so ago mm-hmm. had an 11-game win streak, lost two in a row, then a nine-game win streak, and then lost these two in a row to the Hawks. So, I'm not going to panic. What I will say is this, there's, you know, there were my pick to win the East. They're still my pick with confidence. All right, they're not my pick like the Clippers are to get to the Western Conference Finals where I'm just sticking with them because that's what I picked. Yep. I really feel Boston is the best team in the East, mm-hmm. yeah. but they are not as uh, – some people think, like, it's their clear-cut and all that. I think Denver is more clear-cut in the West no than question. Boston is in the East. I, That's I what totally I'm saying. agree with you. A lot of people don't look at the, the, the point differential. Vegas doesn't look at it like that. Correct. Right. I they, They're thinking they, that the yeah. Celtics have a cakewalk. They don't have a cakewalk in their problem, and I've said this before, but it is an issue. It wasn't last night. I don't know what was going on last night. Just maybe a bad game. But – to, uh, Monday when they gave up the 30-point lead to Atlanta, the thing that I've been talking about, they focused too much on the three. And they started that game 5 of 7 from three and ended it 6 of 31 from three and missed like 14 or 15 or, or maybe it was even 16 straight threes. They have players that can get mid-range shots. Mm-hmm. They have players that can get into the lane. Christos Porzingis, you can post him. You can post Al Horford. And they they fall, they are in love with the three. Now, 10 years ago, if you have a lead and the team is marching back, because the lead was just shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. I'm talking about Monday. And they kept hoisting threes. That would be viewed as terrible basketball 10 years ago. Go get a and I get the change yes. in the three. And, and I, 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 I uh, uh, like the three-point shot, too. But still, go get an easy shot, especially when you've got guys that can do it. So that's the one that scares me a little bit. And they don't, nobody fears them. 
Even Atlanta doesn't fear him. Indiana doesn't fear him. Nobody fears him. Uh, 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 and there's Miami, a Miami, New York, they don't fear him. So Denver people fear, they don't fear they're Boston. They're crushing teams. So, but I, I understand you, that nobody they're, fears. but I don't think, so here's the deal. Like, it's an old movie trope. It usually has to do with, like, should someone get out of a relationship where they get out the old whiteboard or cork board and they oh, do a pros like the best and cons. friend does that. The, yeah, yeah, it's like it's a list of pros, list <laughs> of cons. Yep. I can make a very long list of reasons the Celtics are awesome. You know what I mean? A long pros list, the the boxes they check, historically, eye test stuff, depth, record, point differential, all of that. I have a growing list of concerns, though. So can I I say them to you? Because I bet you agree with a lot of them. Is one of them Joe Missoula? You're damn straight one of them's Joe Missoula, but I'm oh, he's I'm going to get to him in a moment. I'm going to go kind of smallest to largest. Okay. On the concerns list, one is their two key acquisitions have either non-existent or checkered playoff pasts. Mm. So Drew was unbelievable, you know what I mean, when the Bucks won the title. And then his last couple postseasons with Milwaukee were not great. It's one of the reasons they wanted to move off him. So that's a slight concern. Chris Stapps has played in 10 playoff games in his career. He was really good in the first three a half decade ago with Dallas, then got hurt. And then that second series was totally marginalized and then hasn't been back there. Mm -hmm. So those are something of concerns. Then there's the fact that Joe Missoula has the disposition constantly of a poker player who just lost a terrible pot and is just like (laughs) rap and is like ready ready for a fight. And ready to go. Last night, he, yeah. he just un- he's like, don't tell me DeJounte Murray played great. He took 44 shots. He's out there trying to block people's shot. He is just constantly like, who, who, what would you say? Hey, anyone, anyone ask, want to ask me about adjustments now? What about timeouts? Anything. Kind of like he, it. he doesn't. I've grown to like. Okay, that's that's fine. I'm just telling you, you for me. You do not like coaches like that. I just I, I want, feel like Nick would be that type of coach. I, maybe oh, I would. <laughs> you don't like maybe I would, but it, it doesn't, to me, exude calm. It under fire. And then there is, of course, the whole they're not good in the clutch stuff, well. which is the biggest concern. We talked a couple weeks ago about Tatum over yeah. the last few years, him individually. Yeah. This is them since the All-Star break as a team. And so they do blow a lot of teams out, and I give but them credit for that. But not going to run through but the playoffs. That's right. how that's I feel. Thing. And so – for all wilds, do you think I'm I'm not trying to be reactionary no, or over fair. the top? I think I think those are legitimate concerns. I've grown to love Missoula's Idios- who he is. Okay. I, I don't think he's I don't think he's pretending to be that way. No, no I, I don't either. I think, that's I think he he's locked yeah. in and honestly, yep. since there's so much tournament on, it's a little Dan Hurley esque. Like UConn will be up by thirty points and he's yelling at people and he's yelling at fans. And Missoula is just locked in. He he knows the schemes. He doesn't want to be challenged by reporters who claim not claim, but might might challenge some of his decision making. He's right back at them. It's it's also anti Belichick, where Belichick's like, no, sure he will engage. So I don't um, mind it, but you got to win. Well, That's how's he doing? You, They're 11 no, games right. up on the well, box. Well, and we, know what it, we know what it's coming down to, though. The, we know what it's coming down to. If they don't win the East, it's, I don't care what he did in the regular season. It's not going to matter. Okay. Especially, go but, ahead. but this is the uh, off of your point before yeah. we talked about Missoula. Tatum in the fourth, um, not great. And last oh. night he obviously missed a shot that Missoula said was a good shot. His postgame presser, he said, I know I missed a couple this year. So I was like, darn, i got to be due for one. I hit a bunch in my career. He says he likes being in this situation. You know, the other the, – and, the, and the overtime, it didn't go to Tatum. It was more of a traditional play rather than a one-on-one shot for Tatum. But well, I can't I, tell if this is a huge deal or just like, well, hey, make or miss league. Well, I think what you do – what can concern you is it getting in his head, not just – Okay, you know, can I make these shots? But him trying to prove that he's clutch. There's been so much talk about him not being clutch. What's in does his head he now? Go out there it, last he's night, he took 12 it. shots in the fourth quarter. Well, that's what. So that like, does you know what I'm saying? Is he trying to prove that I'm the man? I'm clutch. And, just let it. Let just play. And, and I don't know if we can run. I think we can. Jalen Brown shot, which could have been the game winner, because the numbers were weird. Jalen Brown took one shot in the fourth quarter. Tatum took 12. Then in right. overtime. Tatum only took one, Jalen took four, and he had missed the first three, and Mm. then this one. And his reaction to this was, 
immensely emotional and fire. Well, you're seeing it. And I do think there was, you know, that in this particular game, it was odd seeing in the fourth Tatum get a dozen shots and Jalen Brown get one. That to me was, you know, more coincidental than something really mm -hmm. significant. But here's the one other thing, and this is, I understand, a hobby horse of mine. But I will once again pound the table metaphorically because I have a broken arm. Can't do it that well, actually. <laughs> um, that the number one seeds across sports should be able to pick their postseason opponent. Oh, yes. Because another concern for the Celtics is their path kind of sucks. They are likely playing either Philly or Miami in round one. And, I, and that is not – if Philly is not a traditional eight seed, right, if, assuming they have MB's Embiid back. back right. Miami is just Miami. And I know everyone laughed at me last year when I said Boston didn't want Miami in round one. And then I was proven <laughs> correct in the conference finals after Miami as the eight seed beat the previous one yeah. seed, Milwaukee. And so a path of Miami or Philly – then the 48-minute torture chamber the Knicks could potentially put you in to only then get the opportunity to play potentially Milwaukee. That is not like, like the, the path you would think for a one seed that's going to have 10 more wins than everybody else. I know The Embiid you're, thing is weird. The, the Embiid, unfair. Facing Embiid in round one would feel a little unjust, yeah. if you will, Denver's when you're the one seed. path will be just as hard, if not harder. Agreed. No, what if they so, have the Lakers? The I mean, it's still those games were close. Nick won't admit it, but it was a close sweep. Okay, <laughs> but well, regardless, it, it, more to my point, every other you way should get that, to you should true. get to draft your playoff opponent. I agree for with the that. I, do you? I don't. I don't. I, 100 agree with it. I don't need it. there'd be no and there'd be no it's tanking. A it's a gimmick in the strip. It's, it's <laughs> we've been doing it this way for 77 years. It's working. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Bucks got uh, 35 from Giannis and 20 from Dame. As they mustered only 100 points and lost to the Pelicans, macro look on how Dame has fared uh, in the last two years. One with, of course, in Portland, the other one in Milwaukee. Uh, Brew, has this been a disappointing you know, transition to the Bucks? Don't soft pedal it. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Now we all know it's about the postseason, so mm -hmm. it can work its way out. There's no doubt about that. But to this point. Yes. Number one, you got a coach fired. And I'm not saying Dame did, but the a team wasn't playing fired. well enough and a coach got fired. Whether you want to blame Adrian Griffin or whatever, a coach got fired. That's always to something to do with the players. Number two, you showed the numbers. That field goal percentage is worst in a season in which he's healthy mm -hmm. in eight years. Three-point shooting percentage, worst in a season he's healthy in nine years. Which is the opposite of what I thought would happen. Yeah, you I thought, thought his efficiency he did, would go would be, up, yep. his points would go down. Yep, and so there's that. And, of course, most importantly, there are, what, 11 games behind Milwaukee or behind Boston. Boston. So, look, I, I think they're a good team. Uh, I, one of the reasons I feel better about Boston, even despite their flaws that we just talked about, is because everybody's flawed. It looked like the Bucks, like Giannis and Dame and Doc, had figured it out. Yeah. Remember they came and had yeah. a nice win streak. I don't know what mm -hmm. it was, eight, eight, nine games, something like that, maybe seven games. And then lately they've gone five and six. So yeah. their last 11 so games, when games they need to win or trying to win, they've only won five of 11. So, yeah, it's been disappointing. So here's what's weird about Milwaukee. They are unbeatable when Dame's excellent. Dame has scored 30-plus 19 times this year. They're 17-2. and two. When Dame leads them in scoring, they're undefeated. When Giannis leads them in scoring, they're really good. And then not surprisingly, they're 2-4 and four when someone else does, which usually means one or both those guys didn't play. Correct. But when Dame's excellent, they don't lose. The question is, and the concern is, so to speak, how often can Dame be excellent? Yeah. The, your... Your buddy Bill Simmons a long time ago coined the phrase, or at least first place I heard it, with aging NBA players, is once a week guys. Hmm. Guys who used to be great every, you know, basically every game, and now at this point in their career they yep. can be great once a week, but not more often than that. I don't think that's the Damian Lillard, the Bucks anticipated they were getting when they made this trade. I'm not even saying that's the Damian Lillard they got, but he is – 
This is the first year of his career where he has looked like he is approaching that territory, yeah. if not there. And so that, to me, is is a concern because I I understand why they made the trade, and I still think the trade is totally vindicated. If he wins them a couple playoff games, they make the finals. Like there is no yeah. th- there is. Because I mean, there will be improvement, but they have already won a championship. They've won a championship, but they won a championship with a very different Chris Middleton. Middle, you know what I mean? That's yeah. the other underrated story about the Bucks is Middleton was unbelievable in the championship run mm-hmm. and then got hurt in the He's playoffs the next year. Since, since. And since that following year playoff run when he got hurt, he hasn't been the same player. Yep. He's been hurt this year. And so this they, is also the first. And Dame obviously has shown that he's clutch. We know that. No doubt. But this is the first time where, like, every game means something. He has never been under this type of microscope. And it's going to be even more so in the playoffs. Now, I know they went to the Western Conference Finals one year, but they've never, his teams have never been expected to get to the finals. And now it's finals or bust, and that does add some pressure to you. Do you think he's going to shrink in that? No, I think think he's clutch, but combined with maybe what so, Nixon with the age, it's just it's just this deep in his career, it's something I, he hasn't experienced. But like uh, everybody's looking at every shot, every missed shot, whereas before anything he did was gravy. So it's like oh he doesn't have any help. Can I, can I yeah you you're go. the mathematician on the show. Sure. So he's shooting forty percent from three in March. Mm-hmm. He's only shot in the forties Three times out of 13 games. So it's like when I used to work at Ben and Jerry's. You know, I'd average a, a medium, uh, two scoops of ice cream. But I would never serve two scoops of ice cream. I was always serving one scoop or three scoops, but I would average out to two oh, scoops. Sure. So he was, you know, he gets super hot. He goes 11 for 22 against the Nets. You know, that's fantastic. And then he'll go super cold to go three for 14. Mm-hmm. Well, that 11 for 22 was field goals. That yeah. was five for 11 yep. on threes. So, so it's a little bit of feast and famine from so, threes. Is that weird? Or you're like, uh, ah. no, I don't think, listen, I don't think that's weird. I think that, that the, what, when you, what my head went to is LeBron for his career is 27, 7, and 7 and has never had a 27, 7, yep. and 7 game. Like your averages are actually your, is did you true? know that? He's never yeah, had a never 20. Really? Never once. Playoffs for a regular season, wow. never once had 27 points, seven rebounds, seven assists. It seems like he would try to get I, it. I know. It's, it's, it's kind he of He should go out there and do that. And just, just do so it. But so it, it. I think st- you know, statistically that's not that anomalous. Here is – because I am the one person at the table when we did our picks, picked the Bucks yeah. to win the title, and I still believe they have the highest upside of anyone in the East. Here is my glass half full reading of it. Because Boston is so far out ahead – that the Bucks are in a bit of a holding pattern. And Dame is, I think, this is where I do think the personal life stuff for Dame, of the move and most notably the divorce, and he has talked about right. how it has dragged on him. Mm-hmm. I think that that is more likely to have an effect during the dog days of the season. And then when the playoffs start, this is what the whole thing was for. The whole thing, why Dame wanted out of Portland, why Milwaukee went and got him, was for seven and a half weeks, you know, that start in a couple weeks. And if Dame is getting closer to being a once a week guy, if he has been trying to hold stuff in the tank so he is, you know what I mean, fully functional for the postseason. Again, I'm saying that's an admittedly optimistic view, but I think it's the fact that this team has been so excellent when Dame's been excellent to me, makes their path very clear. Can Dame be excellent in the postseason? If he is, they're the best team in the East. Okay, Frisky Pelicans are 10-3 and three in March. Uh, in fifth place, Zion last three games, 36-29-28, Brew, shooting 70% from mm. the field last three games. Uh, top six in the West, Pelicans could jump up to fourth here. Yeah. If your Clippers keep sliding, uh, host a first-round match. Didn't they just win their last game? Okay. I mean, barely. <laughs> a win's a win, baby. Yeah, but barely. Okay. All right, all right, whatever. You're starting to believe in New Orleans. Not as a Western Conference contender as far as, like, getting to the finals this mm. year, but definitely as a team that could upset someone, have a nice, relatively deep playoff run, and then next year, assuming health, be a contender so to could get they, out of the West. Could they make the conference finals this year? Because to me, that's everyone's ceiling, right? Yes. Everyone's ceiling is lose to Denver in the conference finals. It's kind of how every, we look at it. So are the Pelicans? Yeah, I'll give them a shot at that. Me too. Yep. So I'll give them I, a shot at that. And, and what I like about them 
is that they, they like they play to their strengths. And that's what good teams do. Defensively, they're top five in defensive rating. So Willie Green's got them playing good defense. But Zion and Brandon Ingram are neither one of them is good three-point shooter, especially Zion. He's only taken one three this month, yeah. which is good. All right. But then you got Trey Murphy and CJ McCollum who can shoot the three. And you got size with Valanchunas. My point is they're bottom 10 in the league in three-point attempts. Top 10 in the league in free throw attempts. So we got guys that don't shoot the three great, our two best players, or at least best scores, but they can get to the hole. Yeah. And now it is easier with the floor spread to get to the basket. We just saw the highlights with Zion. Go to the hoop. It's yeah. Keep going to the hoop until they stop you or they foul you. And that's what they do. And so, yeah, I, I like what Willie Green is building there in New Orleans. And it's it's Lakers-ish in that regard. Yes. You know what I mean? We're, they don't shoot a ton of threes either. No, and we're going to live at the line yep. because we're going to attack the basket and we're going to – and not going to live at the three-point line because we don't have the personnel for it. So, a couple things. One is they – the last couple weeks they've been doing it without Ingram. He should be back before the playoffs. Now, I've always questioned the Zion-Ingram fit exactly. So, I'm – that, you know, you're adding your – you know, a guy who was your best player, maybe your second best player, but that is not a seamless addition. Mm. But right now, they'd be playing the Clippers in round one. I'd pick them. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, right, right now, I think that – <laughs> they it, the, again. Let's just assume they're on the opposite side of the bracket of the, the Nuggets. They have similar postseason experience to OKC, more than OKC actually, right. and similar to Minnesota. Yeah. That would be round two for them. Like, could do I think they could beat either one of those teams in round mm-hmm. two? Sure. Mm-hmm. And I think the quiet has been good for Zion. Yes. I think the fact that the Pelicans and Zion are no longer an A or B topic. For shows like this around the league has been good for him. I think that Zion, after that, really, the struggles on the court and the embarrassment off the court that he went through last year, mm-hmm. I think them being him having a quiet, great month, like you said, 24 points on like 62% yep. from the field, rebounding better, the team playing better, I think that's good because I don't think they thrived under that and he didn't thrive or feel comfortable under that microscope. So I give him credit. I, I think like, it's maturation, too. Yeah. Whether he was shamed and embarrassed into it, or he's just learned. Just Whatever the case, he appears to have matured, which is yeah. huge for him. Little prove it game tomorrow, host, hosting the Celtics. So, we'll yeah, see. Celtics. Last night was a prove it game. Yeah, yeah. and they um, beat Knicks Bucks. Yeah, they did. For starters, right. Clippers. Pelicans, you're gonna flip right over to the Pelicans. I, I am from. New- I- <laughs> oh, here we go. I- it's within the. That's it's in the box. hundred percent. It's a lot. Absolutely. Warriors. Not saying I will. Next on FS1, the Fox Sports Channel and Sirius XM. Yeah, of course you're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to a hot show. Warriors coming off an emotional win in Orlando without Kaminga or Draymond after he was tossed. Steve Kerr talked about the ejection on 95.7 The Game. Uh, Take a listen. I felt like in hindsight, I I look back at that Miami game and I regret not saying something because I thought he was on them too much. So, so that, you know, that, that's definitely my fault, but uh, to your point, Draymond knows, I mean, he's, he's a grown man. He's got to handle his own business. Do you think the Warriors refocus for a playoff run? No, here's the problem. They have to refocus right now for a de facto playoff run, which will then make a playoff run impossible. I want to show you guys their schedule because it's a unique thing that's happening. They're going to have nine straight days or games of travel. So they go to Charlotte, then to San Antonio, then back home for a game against Dallas, then to Houston, then back home for another game against Dallas, then to, uh, or then to back to Dallas, pardon me, then back home for a game against Utah, then to Los Angeles, then to Portland, then back home. If they get through that, the prize is and make the play. you go on the road for game one of the play-in. Mm-hmm. If you win that, you go on the road for game two of the play-in. And if you win that, now you are the eight seed and uh, on the road for game one of the of the first round of the playoffs. So they're cooked. Like maybe they, I I think that they are. I think the win against Orlando probably is going to be the difference between the Rockets catching them and the Rockets not catching them. So you think they're? In, I think they're. I think that the they pro, because they have the tiebreaker with Houston. I know they, they do have Houston. some tough games. They have some tough games, but I, I right now my money would be on they finish as the ten, and then don't make the playoffs. But even if they do, they can't go on a playoff run. So no, like the, whatever energy they have, think to me, Brew. Think about it, it's like Steph against the Kings. 
had to expend all that energy yeah. to get through it, and then wasn't the same guy by the time the Lakers series started. Yeah, but now it's starting a couple weeks early. Yeah, that's true. yeah, look, the dynasty's over. I've said that. So I, I, I don't care if Draymond was behaving like a priest for the last two months. They still weren't, like, winning the West. So I agree with that. I do think they'll make it, the play-in. I think the Lakers are better with their size. I think they'd probably beat them if that's who they meet. But if they were to get through, I, I took the question like, are they toast as far as even the play in? Mm-hmm. And I think they can regroup for that. Look, they've been dealing with Draymond his whole career like this, all right? And they found a way to play through it and win games. I think right now, outside, like, I think their biggest challenge, and I don't, I don't think it's too serious, but Jonathan Kaminga didn't play against Orlando. All right, and he's questionable for the next game. So I, I don't think it's too serious, but they need him back. If Kaminga's out, I actually think Draymond will come back and play really well. I think he's going to, you know, I think this will kind of motivate him, all the naysayers, and, you know, I, I, he might have another incident at some point, but I do think he'll be effective defensively mm-hmm. and offensively for this team. So I think that'll help. But, um, yeah, I think they can make the play in, but that's probably it. Okay. They play the Hornets tonight. They're 5-6 and six in their last 11 games. So let's go macro now. Roller coaster of emotions for Steph. Uh, looked upset after Draymond's ejection. Only scored 18, but did close the door on the Magic and sent them to bed. Uh, also played some soccer well wow. with the chairs. Here's Steve Kerr on Steph. For Draymond to get kicked out three minutes in, um, it was really unforgivable. And, you know, I think Steph may have even been a little upset with himself for not pulling Draymond out of there. But I think mostly it was just, come on, man, you know, we got, we need this. And then, you know, Steph is such a fighter. He's such a competitor. He wants it so badly. Okay, can I, before I ask the question, just those back-to-back quotes from Steve Kerr are strange. Why? Like, Steve Kerr blamed himself because Draymond was on the refs in Miami. So Steve Kerr's like, ah, I should have said something. And then Steph maybe blamed himself for not pulling Draymond. It's just you know, odd. Oh, can, I, can I give you a, before I give my answer here, a rationalization for that? Mm-hmm. It's from an off-air conversation we had, which was we were discussing... Uh, and I'll keep the details vague, but kids' grades and how much of it fall on the parents. And we were debating, you know what I mean, at what age? Is it more on the kid, more on the parent? I think the window there is Steve looks at Draymond as he called him a grown man, but not like he doesn't have the self-control of one. So it is my job, it is Steph's job to understand that and to then protect him from himself. Like that's, you know, that's what I took. Can I say this quickly? I don't think I said this yesterday when we talked about it. I'm not blaming. So I do put some blame on the organization as a whole, but I did think watching that because when Draymond was going off on the ref, Steph was like right there. It was almost like he was there to try to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to have seen Steph and CP3. Chris Paul was somewhere around there, too. Maybe grab Draymond, just walk him away. Look, man, let's, let's go. It's over. We got a game. Say, is, like, that I, the, is that the superstar's I'm not job? No, you know what I, mean? I, I don't I'm care trying who to think it was. Like it could have been star, Moses like superstars Moody, Moody do that. for all I can say. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, just, I think he respects Steph enough where he would not – Maybe. Oh, yeah, but also I think that Steph didn't maybe think I, – I think that if it was like, oh, he might get in a fight here, I'll do that. I think maybe he didn't think he needed to press that button three minutes into a game on mm-hmm. a, a nondescript foul call. But go ahead. Oh, so here's the question. Yeah. Sorry to derail. Do you mm-hmm. think we're watching the end of Steph and the Warriors? So here's – I think that there is a non-zero chance – that Steph's final game as a Warrior is coming up in the next couple weeks. I think that the I, I think that anyone acting as if it is an impossibility that everything that has happened over the last 15 months po- or 18 months post championship plus the potential decision by the organization to not bring back Clay Thompson and then all of that to act like it's not possible that Steph's going to say, you know what? I'm going to be I'm 36 years old. Wow. I, I, you, you see how badly I want to win. We're not going to be able to do it here. And the band's breaking up. And so. and, and if and if Clay's not back, yeah. 
The, ba- the band's already broken up. Mm-hmm. Iguodala's doing a podcast. Clay's going to be playing somewhere else. Draymond is going to be dangled in trade stuff at the very least. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to be the last guy at the party with, with no parachute okay, I, here. We, it's possible, but what I think is – I, I wouldn't even I won't even say I wouldn't mind to see seeing that happen. But I think right now, Steph Curry is right now the overwhelming odds are that he wants to end his career as a warrior. I, I think it is and would you agree with that? No, no, no. So if you were to be like Nick, even money bet, Steph is game one next year is a warrior or somewhere else. Obviously, the smart money on at that standard would be he's with the Warriors. But if you offered me, let me think of an example. All right. Hey, Nick, I'll give you 100 to 1 that Wimbenyama is not a Spur next year. I'd be like, no, I won't take it because mm-hmm. he is 100% going to be a Spur next year. Is there a 10% chance? A 15% chance that if this year ends in embarrassment, if Draymond has another incident, if they miss the play-in, if they get whacked in the first play-in game or whatever it is, and and then we see how the, the other part of it is, see how the playoffs go. What if LeBron and it, well. gets, no, I'm saying for somebody, <laughs> for guys, his contemporaries. Mm-hmm. What if KD goes on a deep run? He's my age. What if LeBron goes on a deep run? I, use, I was battling with him. He's older. Like, the, the idea that Steph wouldn't look – would because I think people forget how old he is. He's 36. Right. All of league history, full list of people to play more than half a season and average 20 a game, age 36 or older. Carl Malone, Kareem, LeBron, and Jordan. That's it. Wow. So, like, his history would say he doesn't have a ton of tread left on the tires – does he want to spend it without Clay potentially with Dre, you know, being and Draymond's babysitter to be the nine seed? I don't know. So I'm just saying it's on the board. Here's what it depends on. Steph, we know his legacy is tremendous. Uh, he's arguably a top ten player. Everybody, I think, arguably. I think yes. he is in. Most people say arguably. How much further does he want to go? We know LeBron as much as – you know, touted as LeBron is, as decorated as he is, is still striving yes. for more, right? Mm-hmm. Is Steph, and I don't, I'm not saying Steph's not as competitive as LeBron. I'm just saying, and then none of this is like written in stone as far as these rankings, all right? right? But is Steph thinking, I want to pass magic and be the regarded as the best point guard ever. Mm. I want to have the most rings of this era and have it be viewed as the Steph Curry era versus the LeBron James era. Is any of that in his mind? Even if you would disagree with people saying that, I'm just saying it becomes a discussion. Like if he were to go somewhere and win ring number five, now he versus Magic is a discussion. Now, whose era was it? Steph's or LeBron's? Is a discussion. Well, and even if does he, he want that? Or, or does he is he like, I want to be a warrior. This is where I built this franchise and I'm content. There's a, but there's also a third to me even more likely option, which is it, that he cares less about the rankings and the era and the nebulous stuff. But cares a lot about God dog it. Do you know how fun playing in the NBA Finals is? Yeah. Do you know how awesome? I, obviously, I don't know, but I imagine it's right. dope. Like uh, <laughs> the, the the attention, the exhilaration, the adrenaline. This is what I and I'm still good enough. I'm still good enough. And unfortunately, my surroundings are not going to allow it. He's a smart guy. He knows what a championship team is, oh, yeah. could be, what it is. And so I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is, again, I want to be very clear, and I know this is going to be aggregated out of context. It's fine. I am not predicting Steph Curry is going to say trade me. I am saying anyone acting as if that it's not it's on the board that a couple weeks from now is his last game as a Warrior, I think it's being overly optimistic. I think, I think it is on it's the board. A minuscule chance of him not being a warrior next season. Kobe was con- as competitive as Kobe is. Played out the string with the Lakers and yeah, but I wonder if Kobe hadn't torn his Achilles, like had would you know what we would have done? Huskies next. I think that's a good take. I mean, would all- UConn rolling, number one seed dispatched of San Diego State, thirty point win. This after dispatching of Northwestern by 17, Huskies 35-3. And, and have a matchup, which isn't good for me, because my <laughs> entire family loves Illinois, tomorrow. 
Let's take a look at the odds. UConn won. Purdue, Houston, Tennessee, Illinois, Marquette, Alabama, Duke, uh, Creighton, and Gonzaga. Brew, can the Huskies be beaten? Well, look, my pick uh, pre, pre-tourney pre was UConn. Wow. Well, it might be the one I a, get right what a in bold, the whole tournament. What a courageous <laughs> no, I mean, pick. I, I, Mm-hmm. I saw it as a fact. This was gonna happen. Now, <laughs> I've you guys know I've been watching this since before you were born. All right, this tournament. Right. I've seen many great teams mm-hmm. that everybody thought was destined to win it, not win it. In a seven-game series, would any of these teams beat UConn? No. no. But in a one-and-done, it's possible. I'm not predicting it, but it's definitely possible. And look, Dusty made me. He I'll threatened. He Purdue threatened. Stuff. To never do another graphic for me if I didn't put this one up. He doesn't do the Zach graphics. Zach Eadie. does them. Well, he, he, Get he out of here with me. this. <laughs> I mean, I look, just look at the numbers. 53, the first player, 50 points, 35 boards on 65% shooting since Lou Alcindor, a.k.a. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Man, I mean, I'm just saying, I don't think Purdue's beating them. No. But Edie is right. just a difficult matchup in college basketball. So, and I know UConn's got the seven-footer foot footer as well. So, so I, I want to throw something at you, Wild. Sure. This is your team, and to your credit, you didn't pick UConn a week and a half ago like Brew did. You picked them at the beginning of the season. Yeah, early you were saying it, you were saying it all year really long. I, I, listen, Seven obviously chance. UConn can be beaten. One of their losses is to a team left in the tournament, Creighton. But I don't think Creighton's going to make it to the final to play him again. They probably wouldn't beat him a second time. I picked Houston before the tournament. I think Houston's been banging on the door with Kelvin Sampson ever since he's been the coach. They have been. Uh, UConn obviously is better than Houston, but to Bruce's point, could they get the right matchups and beat him? So these two graphics cut both ways, and they're what mm. I want your reaction to. The first one is they've just waxed everyone. For two straight tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Nine consecutive double-digit tourney victories. Pretty that's good. every game last year and the three this year. So that's good. And then this graphic makes you a little nervous. Longest win streaks Ooh, without Larry facing. Johnson. Yeah, but what yeah. happened to that UNLV team? Well, they ran into Christian Leitner, I They believe. finally <laughs> ran into a one or a two seed, and they lost. Yeah. So that, that, Bobby that, Hurley, that UNLV team, brother, if you don't remember... Even. They won the title, running through everybody, and then the next year they played Duke and lost. And so the the question that I have for you is, or what I'm throwing at you is, are you a level of concern starting with the Illinois game that the Illinois game and then the one or two games that follow will all be the toughest competition that UConn has faced in either tournament? Um, I think that's a fair question. I think UConn is on another level. And... I don't think they're going to be beaten. I don't know about next year, but I've already started to look ahead dynasty-wise. Because here's the thing. If I talk about great, you know, I joke around about team of the century and the Patriots team of the century. So here's how successful the UConn men have been in the last 25 years. This is if they won. If UConn wins this tournament, which they are favored to, they will have as many championships in the last 25 years, which is a solid generation, than North Carolina and Duke combined. That's incredible. Yeah. So I don't know at what point you start viewing UConn as the dominant program in college basketball. And that's just the men. I was the women say, have 10 right. championships, <laughs> eight players of the year la- yeah. since the turn of the no, century. No, I mean, if it's There's gender, no if it's, if it's gender yeah. neutral, then it's, it's the University of Connecticut. Yeah. It's the yeah. best There's college no basketball program. That, but so. you're making a point. And, and can, Dan Hurley, well, my goodness. Well, that's the thing for UConn that they deserve institutional credit for. That's across three coaches. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's three different coaches that have won national titles there. And so, obviously, my nemesis is a Syracuse guy. The, you can, hey, what do you mean? Come Syri- you got your one. Yeah. But that was their rival is what I'm talking about. We're not rivals coach. anymore. No, I understand. <laughs> you got a nice fuzzy I'm mascot, saying they're like, – Hey, Syracuse. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm saying Calhoun was the rival. <laughs> is the Carrier Dome still up? Brand Ayuk still looking for an extension from the 49ers, coming off a 1,307 touchdown year, telling Shannon and Ocho Cinco, I'm trying to get what I deserve. I feel like uh, this season I figured out who I was as a person and a player. People are going to follow me because I've done it the right way since I've been in that building. From the first day I walked in there to when I was there earlier this morning, nice location oh. drop. Uh, if they don't see the worth in that, that's all it is. Brew, one thing I know about you. You're big on intangibles. Yep. So was Ayuk. Um, he added that he's hopeful a deal can get done. 
Do you think if it's not done, this would hinder Brock Purdy at all? I love Brandon Ayuk, and I'm sure Brock Purdy does too. They've mm-hmm. obviously developed some chemistry. Oh, of course. You want him back. It'd be great if he's back, but if he's not, they'll be okay. Oh. Because, and I'm not saying he's not going to be the number two guy, but Jawan Jennings coming off a nice Super Bowl. I think he's a good receiver. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you got Debo. They'll draft. This is a receiver deep draft. They'll draft. I thought someone. they needed offensive linemen. And then in the they draft, still. They, well, they, 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 they got line. other picks. They got oh. other picks. But they'll get their receiver. And of course, you still got Debo and Kittle and Christian McCaffrey. So, they, and look, let me just stop with the feelings and the sentiments and the, you know, speculation. It happened. Brock, Brock Purdy had to play without Brandon Ayuk. One game. Earlier in the season. One game. How did you're right? Thank you, Wilds. Here's how it went. It was against the Giants. The Niners won 30 to 12. The Niners won 30 to 12. Brock Purdy threw 25 for 37. 310 yards, two touchdowns, 111 passer rating. Oh, let me throw this in for good measure. I wouldn't. Two years ago, when Purdy was a rookie, played three games, last three games. Three games late in the season without Debo. Know what he did? What, six what touchdowns. What did he do with anything? No, another great receiver. That's right. But how did he do without Debo this year? Six touchdowns, two interceptions, yeah. similar passer rating to that one eleven. But this year, Brew, how did Brock he do Brock, without Debo? Do you have those numbers just in front of you? Wasn't no, McCaffrey out too? No, no Trent Williams. And I didn't was expect him to win every game. But regardless, I didn't no, expect no. him to be like. You certainly expect Joe him to win the last every game, game either. Uh, so listen, <laughs> no, I'll study this that. is the rare. <laughs> Forget the future take by me. Oh. The Niners window is this moment. And so if Brandon Ayuk is, you know, going to be a problem or unhappy or not report if you don't give him a new deal, you can't trade him because you are too limited at the quarterback spot. You right now are so cheap at the quarterback spot. This is your moment. The t- listen, so if pain. whether I'm right or wrong about Brock Purdy, either way. Midnight's approaching, and here's why. If I'm right, then you are, in short order, going to be on the quarterback carousel. If I'm wrong and he's awesome, then you are, in short order, going to have to be tearing away the rest of the team because you're going to pay him $50 million a year. So either way, this year is your moment. This is your window. You can't go backwards. And so I don't look at that, and I never am the you know, short-term thinking guy. I think the Niners are in a very unique position. They have the uh, one of the oldest tackles in the players in the entire league at left tackle. The, the best player on their offense is a position that doesn't age well, that has a high injury rate, and an injury-prone yeah, player in right. Christian McCaffrey. Debo, your other great wide receiver, has had a tattered injury history because of his, because of his own his playing style. So I don't think they – and you you don't have, in my opinion – you're right, Drew, they have other draft picks, but you are going to need to use those draft picks on the right side of the offensive line that you said all year was a huge but weakness for them. Right. And I would argue potentially they need help in the secondary. So for all those reasons – Go all in. So you would not draft – okay, but you're saying the, pay IU. I would, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I would say I would pay IU. I'd love to see him back. I just think that they – I think that – they they are the offense with Purdy works under a very specific set of circumstances. And upsetting those circumstances is setting yourself up for failure. When you know that Purdy if if you believe in Purdy, you know very soon he's not gonna have those weapons. Bro, there's no more goalposts. Actually, they are. There, there's, there's no more. Yes, there, I mean, there you are. Can bring them out. Hey, you but it moving even them make like sense. crazy. How am I moving them? He what? did he face duress adversity last season? What? Yes, that's not what and I'm he talking played about. Well, that's not what I'm talking now about. Now it's he five, needs next. exact that's, this exact specification no. is what that, he needs no, to play well him against the Giants. What? Yeah, oh, he yeah. can't have any different I, receivers I, at all whatsoever. I'm, I'm rooting, rooting for Purdy. Purdy. I'm saying really? I'm keep by you. Stop it. I'm you trying to not, help him you out. You cannot say that with a straight face. Rooting for Purdy. You know what a trick a trick that Nick does. Live from New York, it's the show that is predicting a 15-point Husky victory. Tomorrow night against Illinois? Yeah. Are you going to watch it at home, or are you going to be I might have to leave. your own house? I might have to. I might 
get pushed out of my own house. <laughs> it's the second hour of First Things First. Today, is there a chance that Paul George is in Philadelphia next year wow. wearing a, a Sixers jersey, not just there? Wow. Uh, meanwhile, the Wolves in Denver, number one seed on the line tonight. Must win. Some people are saying <laughs> so. Uh, but right now, it's Friday, March 29th. And as the race towards the playoffs heat up, we've baked up the most delicious segment. Well, oh, what do you have? We've got a pie finally. I complained. Oh, I complained wow. a lot. That's a heck of a pie. The director's telling me to hold it high, which is difficult you without like seeming like a, I know. I'm not going to. <laughs> Hit him in the you, face. That, you arm. really look like if it's here, to pie is supposed face. to be here. But once it gets up here, <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, it's hard. <laughs> to it's just, a heavy pie. Well, is that apple? Or this is an not apple. Mississippi mud. Like I Bro, you're going to love this. Mm-hmm. What, I'm not what a big apple doing? pie guy. I don't Funny. like fruit in my I pie. I know we're supposed to be coach analysis, but it's also what? a little present. <laughs> you got oh, a wow. Mississippi, Mississippi mud Oh, that's muddy, too. <laughs> yes, let me show. Let me show. Okay, uh, no, we don't, 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 we don't have wow. to Wow, okay. looks delicious. Oh. Might kill me, but looks delicious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be go going out and stop. Thank you, Wiles. Well, it was Katana. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Keta. Sorry. Uh, awesome. All right. We really do this. Thing. Can I just go eat this? No. Yes. Can I do? Y'all Grab have my plates and you have to type that cogent you. analysis. It's time for title pie. All right. There are some new teams losing their slices. And a, one new team with a slice. But, Brew, your beloved Clippers. What? They don't have a slice. Obviously, there are a lot of other teams that don't have a slice, but these are teams that are playoff beam. teams the beam. or in there. The, the Beam. I Listen, mm. I apologize wow. to the Beam, the good people of the Beam City, Sacramento, but they they don't have a slice. Golden State obviously doesn't have a slice. Now, 1%. Same as last week, the Knicks. Listen, I just respect them. They're not going to have another playoff gear, and they're already playing at a playoff level intensity. But damn, man, they might be the two seed. Yeah. And so I give them credit, and they're getting healthier. They're at 1%. 2% Phoenix. I can't totally discount them, but I also cannot foresee a scenario where they play great for two straight months. But because Durant is still so great, Devin Booker is... You know, maybe you expected him to go to a slightly higher gear this year, and he hasn't, but we know that it's there, and it feels healthy. You can't totally discount him, but I put him at 2%. 3%. Welcome to the pie, New Orleans Pelicans. Oh, 3%. Under the radar, getting Brandon Ingram back. I think they're going to win round one if it is a 4-5 or 5-4 or against the Clippers. That would put him in the final four. They mm. get 3%. Wow. Dropping a bit. Philly. Down to 4% because they have been so bad without Embiid that I worry that, about what their playoff position is going to be in and Bede having to be thrown right into a must-win scenario. Also, oddly, their performance without Embiid makes me feel better about his MVP last year. Great. Job. I understand that. And he was playing like And he was MVP playing this unbelievable year. this year. Their record was great. The moment he goes away, they're awful. Next. All right, another team that lost a little percentage of their pie. Uh, Miami. Mm, wow. You've got to catch Indy for the six seed. You can't be in the play in Miami against Philly. You can't have a 7 8 play in Miami, Philly, and then all of a sudden one of them is playing for their lives. I'm surprised you don't want to see them against the Celtics in round one. Well, here's the thing. In theory, I think that would be fun and I would like to see it, but the way to get there, the only way you can be the 8 seed is if you're in the play in and lose and then win, or if you drop all the way to the 9. Like, none of those are good scenarios. So get to the 6 line and do some, you know, do some heat culture y stuff. <laughs> okay, 6%. Okay, see, now this is title pie, not tears. But if it were tears, this would be called Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend. A little young, a little skinny, but very impressive. So the Oklahoma City, <laughs> where, where, listen, I, I want to give them credit, but they are so young, they don't have the size that you think they're going to need in round two or three in the West. And they might play the Lakers in round one, who have just been their kryptonite, so to speak. But... SGA, legitimate MVP candidate, not just like fringe, legitimate candidate. Chet Wilds guy's been awesome. They've built the team really well. Sam yeah. Presti's done a great job. The coach has done a great job, 6%. 7%, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. If when Carl Anthony Towns comes back, he fully accepts being the number two option, I like what the team can be. Yeah. And you I don't think he has? I, I don't I know. I, 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 I think maybe yes, but then maybe he saw all the love. He's like, wait, Anthony Edwards, Michael Jordan now. Do people not know I'm the greatest <laughs> big man of all time? What are you talking about? 
thing about Do people not know what I did last year was more aggressive than the Nuggets did? I'm going to show them when I get back. That stuff concerns me. And, and so, but give them credit. Chris Finch has done a good job. It's a well-built team, well-built roster. Number one defense in basketball might be the number one seed. 8% bigger piece. The Mavs, scarier by the day now. Yeah, that's true. And credit where it's due, I have been probably one of Kyrie's most vocal critics for a lot of the shenanigans and the fact that I think bag is a little overrated. Turns out the greatest player of all time agrees with me on that take. Thank you, J.J. Redick. Um, But uh, also, I just... I wanted to see more production to go along with the the amazing highlights. Well, they've been awesome. And he and Luca, little stuff. I, I know this is going to sound like, you know, Kevin Costner and Draft Day, but I you saw the story that Kyrie was the last one to leave Luca's party, that he and him were hanging out at his birthday party, the just the two of them. I like it. I like the pairing. There nobody wants them in round 1. 10% the Lakers. For the first time, including the year they won the title, Brew, they have an elite offense in Los yeah. Angeles. The number two offense in the league. In the league since the break. They seem like they are healthier. They're getting Gabe Vincent back, who was their big offseason acquisition, who has barely played for him. Right. We'll see about Vando. But right now, as presently constituted and healthy, they are, in my opinion, the second best team in the Western Conference. 14% Milwaukee. They dropped a bit. I'm starting to be a bit concerned because I understand they can't be the one, but they could drop to the three, yeah. and you don't want the Knicks to pass you. Like, just tighten some stuff up. I still think they have the most upside because of the Dame Giannis duo. 15%. Boston. I understand they deserve to be higher than 15%. I just don't trust them. Their coach is a little, I don't know what the right word is. He just always seems anxious. It seems like your, your buddy you go to Vegas with, you leave him, you come back, he's at the blackjack table, he's sweating. It's like, what's going on? It's like, man, it's been a rough 90 minutes. It's like, chill out, man. Just chill out. And so that doesn't instill confidence, but the starting five's outstanding. And then 25% Denver. It's at this point shocking when they lose. Yes. They've lost three times since the All-Star like, break. What? Twice to Phoenix. One of those in overtime and yep. one Kyrie doing the sky hook. Uh, it would be, in my opinion, Brew, tell me if you agree, a choke job if they don't make the finals. Like, they are now in a position. They don't have to win yep. the title because Boston is the favorite. But if Denver doesn't make the – if they're healthy and don't make the finals, yep. we're going to say, oh, man, something disastrous happened. Yep. There's title pie. Well done. Well done. Look, I think, in truth, Denver deserves a much bigger slice. Boston, bigger slice. Milwaukee, like a lot of those teams. New Orleans, not winning it. Knicks, no chance. No chance? No chance. One in a hundred. No chance. All right. But my beef is with how are the Clippers? Oh, they can't even get two. They have as much of a chance to win it as Phoenix. They, and I think they have, I can argue, their talent is just as high as Phoenix's at the top of the roster. And then they have more depth than Phoenix. I get it, and I will admit this. They seem to be wilds, and I know I've reserved this term for the Here Eagles of last season, but there's some type of supernatural <laughs> funk no. going on out there in L.A. I mean, my goodness. So I, I'm a little bit hesitant. But they do deserve a slice of the pie. And here's the thing, Nick. You remember three years ago, Ty Luke's still the coach, gets them to their only Western Conference final in the franchise's history. Guess what happened that year? Well, kind of a funk at the end. Oh, yeah. Finished eight and seventeen, eight and seven in their last fifteen. Went lose five out of their last nine. Not playing well at all. Only won forty seven games. They already got forty five this year. And then to make matters worse, Kawhi Leonard gets hurt in the second round against Utah, and they still go on to win the series. So I'm saying. They still, they deserve a slice of pie. That's okay. what I'm saying. So I had them on the preliminary edition because I do it 24 hours ahead of time. Then I look over it again the next morning. In the oven. I, exactly right. I had them on there. And then I saw Wilds, mm-hmm. some really? just startling graphics on this show yesterday, talking about the Clippers 
post All-Star break. Now, I thought they were my graphics, but it turns out they were Bruce graphics, and it was about it James Harden. I keep it And real. so you, you brought this to my attention after I brought it to your attention, now I'm bringing it to your attention again. It's kind of a snake eating its tail of statistical graphics, and that is why the Clippers have a 0% slice of title pie. 0%. I, th- I like the Knicks more than them right now. That, Look at this. Oh, speaking of, can I, I just want a larger From New Knicks? York slice. Yes. I've got three graphics. Yeah. And Ramsey had these, ten of them. These these better I, had be pick, I, I had to pick three. <clears throat> First of all, the big three. Uh, Brunson, OG. Um, yeah. Oh, Brunson and OG. I'm sorry. It's yeah. just the big two. Oh, yeah. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 uh, 14-1. and one. Best trade of the trade deadline was getting OG. So, when that squad is working, hmm, pretty good. Never mind, we got Mitchell Robinson coming back, Julius Randle come back. Then we know that they can win. They have been winning. Everyone like, all right, you believe in all those teams. You have to believe in New York. And this is this is a tricky one that Josh did. Knicks in the fourth quarter. You're like, okay, point differential, sure. It's one of those graphics where the footnote is, is the most more notable thing. Thirty-eight and two wow. this year, Brew. When impressive. leading, entering the fourth. And everyone, it's very fashionable. Ah, no lead is safe. Ah, you know, uh, up 14, doesn't matter. Tibbs has everybody locked down, and Jalen Brunson is not letting teams come back. I'm not asking for a huge slice. We're at 1% now. Maybe just... 2%. 2%. Maybe I'll take a <laughs> – give me a piece of the Lakers. Right. That stat is in – 38 so impr- Especially in today's NBA. So you have to win three quarters. You love winning quarters. Just I, win three. I, I do love well, – and then we're good. Uh, so here's the – my concern for the Knicks, because everything you said is correct. Mm-hmm. Well, my concern for the Knicks is do they have a bit of a reverse of Miami? Meaning that Miami is kind of lethargic – it's odd because they have good culture there, fair but that they and then the playoffs come around and they ratchet everything up and become a far better yeah. team year after year. Tibbs's teams historically, part of his greatness is getting all the juice out of the berry almost instantly. Yep. But then they don't have another year to get to. Now right. maybe the Randall injury actually pays dividends for them because he has been out of gas in every playoff run of his yeah. career. So maybe him being out, like, he'll have more juice left. I don't know. So I, I buy it to a degree. Solid. It's still very hard for me to see them winning four rounds. Quick update on Denver is what you were saying. I don't I do not do title pie. I just bring the pie. Oh. <laughs> oh, just, just really? Because I thought they were in a must-win tonight, Wild. So what happens if they lose? Probably down to 99. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Paul George headed to Philly? Maybe. Maybe, wow. maybe a leverage play. Let's check in on the Clippers in the fourth spot on the West. They're four and six in their last ten, bro. Look in the future. According to Brian Windhorst, there's some rumblings that Paul George and L.A. are, quote, apart on contract talk. Now, Windhorst thinks the deal does get done. There's also some speculation that Philly could swoop in. You know, Daryl's always got his eye on the trade wins. So a lot there. What's the better chance for Paul George if he wants to win a title? Is it your L.A. Clippers? or the Philadelphia 76ers? Well, first, let me say this. I, I think George will end up back with the Clippers. Um, they've already extended Kawhi, obviously. George is younger. You would think, you know, he'd be a guy they want to bring back. And they're going into that new arena, and they got all these stars from Southern California, Westbrook and Harden included. Again, I would think they want George and Kawhi there. And he's from Southern California, as I said. So he probably wants to be back there. Now, to answer the question, Neither is awesome just because for, – for, actually for similar reasons. Injuries. You know, MB's got the injury concerns. Obviously, the Clippers have the injury concerns. But of the two, I would say, like, let's say health is there. I would say the Sixers. 100%. Because if he goes – I mean, you're talking about Maxi at point it fits all-star. well. Yeah, Joel Embiid's obviously a center all-star. And now George – it would be great if they – if you could promise me – like, let's say George goes there next year, and the Sixers will have the money if they just want to go out and get well, him that's, as a free agent. If they all were healthy, you can promise me, MB, George, they'll be healthy throughout the year with Maxi. I think they'd have as good a chance as anybody well, in the East and, to win – get and, to the finals. And, listen, I am less big on – just, you know, who are the best 15 players in the league, Get you know, put, pair them together, right. than I am on 
the best players in the league and their fits and positions. I understand it's positionless basketball, but not really. Mm-hmm. You, you need a point guard, ask Phoenix. You know what I mean? You, 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 you need a real big man, ask the Clippers the previous few years. I understand they've addressed it somewhat now. Like, so to have a point, I understand you score first, but a point guard in Tyrese, a wing in mm-hmm. Paul George, and a true center in Embiid, even though he can stretch the floor, that really makes basketball sense. And from a money perspective, I can, I'm not reporting this, but I know this because I know Daryl without having talked to him. I know this. He'll offer Paul George as much money as he's allowed to. And Philly has yep. not just one, they have two max cap spots available theoretically if they wanted to renounce everyone other than Embiid and Maxi. Mm. The, and if you remember Daryl's on the record interviews when, it, when he was waiting to trade Harden, one of the things he was talking about was, maintaining the flexibility of all that cap space yep. this coming summer in a league when the only teams with cap space stink. Yep. They are, I mean, are just aggressively bad teams. And so I think that <clears throat> it, maybe Paul George will want to stay there, or maybe this postseason goes poorly, and maybe Harden does stay. And then maybe Paul George doesn't want to stay there. I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm not going to act like I know those guys' relationships. But the Clippers don't seem to be like, hey, where are we all going to dinner after the game, guys? No. They don't have that. Again, I'm not there. I'm across the country. It just doesn't feel like that when you watch them. I'm also across the country. You're right. (laughs) So I I think that this is – because the other thing for Philly is, and this isn't Paul George's problem, it's not anyone's problem, but Philly's problem is – where are they going to spend that money? Yeah, you know what I mean. If not, the, I understand Clay's available. Clay's not. I thought we were uh, looking for someone disgruntled. Wasn't that the, the plan? Well, like maybe someone's going to ask out. Right, but that didn't happen this I know. year. And so, yeah, maybe in the summer it could theoretically. Ah. I understand that, but Paul George just he, being a free be and great. clear free agent, and the fit is great. Yep. The fit. The Paul George as the. If Paul George your best player, you cannot win. A championship. We know that, and that's not an indictment on him. Yep. That's the case for almost every player in NBA history. Um, and if Embiid's your best player, we haven't even seen you make conference finals. But in theory, Embiid being your one, Paul George being your two, Maxi being your three, and that at one point that switching. Works. And they got to go for it because who knows how long Embiid is going to remain yeah. healthy. Uh, well, oh, I right. thought you were talking about I mean, the he's disgruntled not even meter. Right now. Like yeah. Daryl's like, who's disgruntled? And it's like, what? <laughs> no! <laughs> Yeah. Oh shoot! I wasn't planning That's on that. True, yeah. That's know. true, though. I yeah. know. Like, that makes sense. And I just—I don't think the Clippers are going to be happy how this year is going to end. Just my opinion. You know what I'm done hearing about? The new arena. <laughs> just yes. doesn't care. Just going to be awesome. If it's going to be so awesome, why? Like, well, Paul George's not there. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> Kawhi will be. Medals time. Celtics in Atlanta. Jalen Brown. He's been catching some great dunks. Great dunks. Uh, this is two of his 18, but it wasn't enough. Celtics lose. Bro- bronze medal, only two games last night. It's only four teams to choose from. Giannis, 35-14-4 and four in a loss. We try not to give medals to guys who lost. Again, the games. NBA wasn't trying to compete with the NCAA tournament last night, so a light night of basketball. Silver Zion, 28-5 and five in a win for the surging Pelican. Zion, 64% from the field this month, 24 points per game and finally rebounding for the yeah, after you know, four rebounds a game early in the year. And then DeJounte Murray. Uh, 44 shot attempts is a lot. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Uh, I think he missed a dozen threes and a, a, a 13 twos. It's the most missed of those since Kobe's final game when Kobe was oh, gunning for 60. Yeah. Uh, but they won, hey. and he's hit the game winner. He gets the gold. There's sure. the podium from last night in the association. Uh, breaking NFL news. Adam Schefter oh. reporting. Hassan Reddick is headed to the Jets. Last year, he had 11 sacks. Uh, year before that, he had 16 and went to the Super Bowl. But that gosh darn turf prevented the Eagles <laughs> uh, from getting good grips and being able to get to Mahomes. Uh, Nick, your reaction? I mean, the J- the Jets are funny to me because the, so they lose their top pass rusher to the Eagles in free agency, who's a young ascending player. Yeah. They then trade for an aging, seemingly somewhat declining player who's got one year left on his contract because, well, if we don't have that second or third round pick in two years, 
I ain't going to be here, so what does it matter? <laughs> and so, I mean, the, there, there is an element of they are doing a lot of work on a house that they are moving out of. And so I get it. Like, maybe it'll hit. And so they are the Jets better today than they were yesterday? Yeah, because yeah. Son Reddick's a good player. I like it. Do, they paid more for him than the Titans paid for Snead. It feels like it's a rich price to pay, but – Again, I'm just a guy trying to take the long view, not a guy trying to keep my job running the Jets. So, I, I don't believe I've ever uttered this word or phrase with the Jets, but they're behaving like they're s oh. I mean, Am I wrong? No, no they, they are. Right. They're behaving like they're and, – and you know what? I mean, nobody's going to be shocked when they don't win the Super Bowl, but they're going for it. Yeah. We got a 40-year-old quarterback. Yeah. We might lose our jobs if this doesn't right. work. Let's go for it. That's There's what they're certainly doing. pop, right? Playoffs are bust, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Absolutely pop. I yeah. don't know if that's going to catch on as much. Like Not like we'll S-Pop, we'll try. I'll try to take in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of next, uh, Denver has to win tonight. Pop. And we'll see you tomorrow. Or no, we'll see you Monday.